You're listening to CFYT Radio in Dawson City, the Yukon, uh, 106.9 FM and www.cfyt.ca, or if you're listening to us on your television on cable channel 11, that's where you can also find us. And uh, we're going to be playing some records, and we're going to be having a conversation with a very fascinating individual who's just uh, drifted into town, like all of us seem to at some point or another. And uh, we're going to learn a little bit about his project that he's working on and that uh, he's going to develop over this year and the next year. So uh, I'd like to introduce to the radio here Igor Dindia. Is that how you see your last name? Hi. Well, it's great to have you here in the station. Uh, but uh, what we really want to talk about is, well, how about before we kind of go into into this whole big project that you're that you're investigating, maybe tell us maybe a little bit more kind of back about who you are and you know, uh, some of the other projects you've done, and that will kind of give people a background as to why you're here. As I'm, I'm a filmmaker, 29. And I came here because, uh, yeah, I, am, I specialize in adventures, right? So I got a background in uh, adventures, like, yeah, last few years, maybe more in the wilderness, uh, but I started with uh, war uh, places like uh, Bosnia or Chechnya or hmm. Sahrawi regions. And, uh, yeah, so I started filming, you know, what made me curious, basically. Last time we were in, in Chechnya, I was following the investigation by Nova Gazeta, it's like, uh, the national newspaper against okay. the government, oh, okay. and because they found out there was something uh, like hidden and pretty uh, strange in this uh, terrorist attack who happened in Beslan in 2004, okay. and they found out there was kind of uh, uh, spy things behind, so the government was actually backing up the, the terrorists. Oh really? Uh, yeah, they found That's out awesome. those kind okay. of things. Yeah, so uh, and I was pretty curious about that because everybody was saying something different about it. Yeah, they weren't even sure about the number of deaths. So. Okay. So that's why I, yeah, I went there. You know, just find information firsthand. Yeah. Uh, so. Okay. That's, so that was those are the that's projects a, you're doing yeah. there. Okay, yeah, and that's then the background. Let's say. And then, and as I say, you know what? After <laughs> after this tragedies and yeah. you know people grieve. It's like. Because they project their grief in you. Yeah. It's like you, you absorb your grief. It's their, their a lot of and pain uh, intense emotion. And after emotion, a while, yeah. I mean, it's like you need a break, right? I was super young <laughs> yeah. also, so I was like 21, 22, and yeah. this kind of thing. So I say, you know what? I prefer wilderness. <laughs> 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 this kind of thing. Something so, peaceful. Yeah. yeah, so I just started retracing all the scores, basically. So I, li I lived in a cave for 700 hours on my own on the ground, uh, isolated. Uh, so no phones, nothing. And I'm pretty curious because I know that here we got a, ca a caveman too. I was super excited yeah, when I yeah, met. I mean, it's a different experience. Of course, it's much you know tougher than me for sure. Yeah, I was living there for a long time. Yeah, I'm super curious about it. Yeah, yeah. So there was an. Ex so you said you were following the footsteps of these explorers. Yeah. And so there was yeah. an explorer, I guess, yeah. who lived in a cave. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, there was um, there was a pioneer in that in 1961. It was a French guy. Okay. He came and you know Spelunk and Spelunk or whatever. Yeah. And uh, he said it was very curious to see what happens to people when you put someone underground without the sunlight, without a wash. And it's a kind of experience out of time. It's called it's it's sensory time. deprivation or something. Exactly. Like um, yeah, to see how your body reacts. Okay. Uh, what changes in your body? It's very interesting. It's especially about memory. It works totally different. Oh, really? In what way? Uh, you forget things like in the short range memory. It's like uh, it's pretty confused because normally you, your your body used to have uh, washes and you know the sunlight, so there's a lot of weight during here and time. Okay. Uh, but in that place, where everything is dark for for months and you have no watch at all and you have no other people to talk to yeah your memories start building things uh, it's kind of a puzzle so it's, really? uh, yeah it's kind of mixing information uh when you when you're sleeping or so you maybe you're still you eating pasta now and next two hours you're thinking that uh, you were eating beef or something, right? So you replace information. And maybe you had beef yesterday. So it's like, you know, mixing information together. And for your senses, it's like uh, something that really amplifies your senses. Because when I got off the cave, um, I could smell people, actually. Really? Uh, really? Yeah, I could feel different scent from different people. And uh, I could hear noises much, much uh, 
stronger and louder than than uh, before the cave. Okay. It only lasts for a couple of hours, I think. Yeah. How long were you under underground for? Uh, it was a month. So uh, one seven, month. Yeah, seven and a hours. So <laughs> I only had the radio for um, security reasons because okay. it was a national reserve. So they didn't allow me to go there on my own because it was. Um, in that area, it can happen that there is an earthquake or something actually happened once. Oh, really? While yeah, you were doing very short okay. shape, but, you know, people were like, oh, who's the guy in the cave? He's going <laughs> to die. So, you know, they just, uh, I just let know people that was gay. There yeah. was a rescue team. Okay. And, uh, yeah, the, the cave was actually closed, so no people could go there, accuse people that huh. would go there, just, you know, knocking on my door, say, are you there? Yeah. So, it's actually happened <laughs> once. So we had to Knock on the it. cave door. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So it was it was very dangerous too because it was yeah. a kind of a hole like thirty meters on the ground so you cannot get into in the in in the hole without a rope or something so people could have died looking for me so and so but what was the motivation you're you're filming this or you're, this yeah, is for a, d- yeah. for your like an art project or is this a, a movie you're making or uh, no I make just a different uh, documentary uh, okay. uh, whenever I do something new like. Uh, this uh, cave experience or the Baslan the, the, the investigation in Baslan or when I walk the local river it's like a big dam mm-hmm. uh, just to show people where I li- where I'm living right okay uh, because I think yeah you can have the best experience in the world but if you don't share it yeah it's like it never happened right yeah. so it's very important I think it's our uh, it's our duty that you have yeah. responsibility to share it because it could be inspirational for somebody else or just you know just for entertainment or just to have fun yeah so yeah having a beer at the pit is a beautiful thing <laughs> but if you write it down and you share it yeah. like it's it's also great right so yeah yeah well so what is the kind of the venue for these things you uh, have you shown them at like film festivals or does it go on uh, tv yeah. or uh, no no uh, not in tv yet but because the, these guys on tv have very strict rules and sure. they want to really handle the thing uh, so sometimes just refuse it or uh, yeah, I prefer actually share it online. So if I get the sponsors before, mm-hmm. um, I can pay expenses. I can take a little uh, wage for myself, like a little payment. Yeah. When it's possible, actually never happened before. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and then I share it online for free. I put subtitles in English. Yeah. Okay. Of course, I don't know how to slate it because I'm not <laughs> skilled enough. <laughs> but I asked some. Uh, yeah. Some guys, you know someone to, to translate and I put it on the internet and they share it. I think it's gonna be like a web series or something uh, about here in the Ukraine, but we still have to plan. Okay. Uh, about the festivals, I won the Adventure Film Festival in 20, uh, was 29 or 2010. Okay. 2010. Where yeah, is that? In London, UK. London, okay. Yeah, it was the first edition, so. And it was a movie about uh, the Mongol Rally experience. We went by a very shitty car, like a white tan Fiat from Italy to Mongolia, going down to Afghanistan for a while, up to uh, Himalayas for a while. Of course, the car was broken, you know, on its way. So it was like in Kazakhstan was already completely destroyed. We only had three years. We crossed Afghanistan with like two years. We got stuck at night in the cane, and we were really risked to see the guys from, you know, the Taliban's, but. You saw the, you encountered we, the we, Taliban. No, while but it was pretty risky because you <laughs> never, you know, when you are in war places, yeah, you never move at night. You always have to keep moving mm. because if you stop, you're a target. Especially in places where Taliban's work and they uh, are pretty active, and uh, they move at night because it's guerrilla, right? So they, uh, they, you know, they try to make like, uh, um, how do I say, a blitz or something like. They uh, get into a camp. They kidnap people and they go away right so and they everything happens at night and uh, when there's a shooting in Afghanistan 90% is in, at night because mm. it's hard to people see to sneak the around enemy. And, yeah, yeah. yeah so. okay hold on a second I got a call you could take a phone call or well I guess not uh, <laughs> so, I've never said that happened before yeah the Taliban are calling yeah. <laughs> say, stop yeah, talking about us <laughs> Yes, we yes, can hear you. <laughs> he wasn't there. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so this kind of things, you know, and uh, yeah, we went to the Africa Rally too with the same car. You know, okay. We tried to. Uh, we actually hitchhiked back from from Mongo, from actually Siberia back to Europe uh, with a car. So you know, loading the car onto tracks and uh, to. You you hitchhiked the car. Yeah, yeah the car. Yeah. So <laughs> whenever. Was it getting see, getting a ride when you're just. Just a, one guy standing on the side of the road is hard, hard enough. <laughs> Getting your whole car 
<laughs> yeah, on the track. You guys, you know, <laughs> yeah, you guys, no, it's not. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of trackers okay. on that, in that places, right? Yeah. And they actually don't have this uh, insurance thing that I have here in North America. They don't even pick up hitchhikers anymore. Really? Yeah, uh, he checked here from Toronto, so yeah. I know that, you know, they never, uh, because it's kind of, you know, the company has a kind of insurance. Oh, uh, okay. I've been told okay. that, I actually think it's like that. So, yeah, we hitchhiked uh, with a car, yeah. so uh, there was a lot of tracks that, uh, you know, carry uh, cars or small tracks, and got a lot of room on that, tra on that track, so we just hitchhiked back. Okay. And then from Europe, on a couple of months, we came back to rescue the car, you can see, to fix it for the Africa Rally. Okay. And the car, the car is still in Cameroon somewhere outdoor. <laughs> <laughs> we are supposed to take it and fix it, uh, but because it wants to cross uh, Americas from Patagonia to Alaska. Oh, okay. So, like in two years. Yeah. But this project is pretty expensive, so we have to ship the car from there, we got to fix it, because I think it's, now it's a wreck. Yeah. It's not even a car anymore, so... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so have you heard of uh, that that uh, show that you and McGregor did, or the the long way round? Oh way yeah, down? That, yeah, that's actually uh, uh, I really like the idea. Yeah. But actually, it's a pretty fancy way of traveling, anyways. Okay. Just, I mean, they got very good motorbikes, and uh, they are, um, yeah, they are someone who uh, can back them up if something is wrong. I mean, I don't think an actor just go around. Uh, without an insurance or without yeah. a good, you know, something that can back you up if yeah. you get in trouble or something. Uh, I really like this experience, but it's different. You know, mm -hmm. I try to be like uh, the old pioneers. I try, I try to, because it's so tough and hard. Yeah. Like old pioneers, so the less you carry with you, the better it is. More, you have to increase the exposure what you do, so you learn quickly. What do you mean the exposure? The exposure to risk, the exposure to, uh, if you go in the wilderness, uh, the exposure, like, if you have, for example, technology, it could be a big help for you, right? Like cell phones, yeah, and cell GPS. phones, GPS. I mean, if you want to have an experience on your own, whatever, whether it's a cave or a river, mm -hmm. you can't just. If you go there with a GPS, a radio, and a laptop, and you can tweet in the middle of the river, it's not loneliness. It's yeah. being on your own, but you know, sharing with a lot of friends at the same time. So you feel like you can share your fear with people, right? So yeah. it's like. When you have a big weight and you share it yeah. in this place, you know, the, yeah. the heavy things with other people, so mm -hmm. it's nonsense at all. And while you're on, when you are on your own, and you have to rely only on yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's pretty tough because yeah. you feel like so fragile, especially in the wilderness. Yeah. Uh, I experienced this in Slovenia. I was crossing the forest in, in, a, in a, let's say, bear country. Not these bears, of course, yeah. but European small bears. And when you camp outdoor at night, you have no phone, no radio, no GPS, nothing. You just have to rely on yourself. You feel like, I mean, super fragile. Or <laughs> they're like, anything happens. Yeah. I mean, you, that's it. <laughs> You're done. I mean, yeah. Right? So, but even if it's really scary, um, it's kind of, makes you kind of addicted to it. Yeah. Somehow. And you, you find a way to overcome the situation. So you say, maybe I can have a little bit more. So step by step. Yeah, and you learn not to jump too far. I mean, just following uh, basic rules, slowing and slowing, slowing. You know, it's funny though because really that kind of technology has only been around for you know like cell phones. We only really had mass distribution of them for maybe fifteen years or so, and even GPS is much more recent. Like up here in Dawson. I think uh, they've had cell phones for a while, but not like the 3G, so you, you couldn't surf, you know, Facebook or whatever, mm -hmm. walking down the street, you could only do that at home. And so I think just last year is when it came up here. Um, but so it kind of reminds me like when I was a kid and you go camping, you didn't have a cell phone or anything like that, and you were kind of a little bit mm -hmm. disconnected from the world. Yeah, I mean, and I was like, uh, when you have to drive for 400 kilometers so far mm -hmm. away and they say, hey, take your phone with you. Uh, don't, I mean, but when I was a kid, I mean, 10 years ago, maybe, uh, or, yeah. or 15 years ago, it was... <laughs> <laughs> this is the, the past calling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Bill Gates or something. <laughs> like, hey, what are you going to do with my computer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, sometimes it's just like... Uh, yeah, so now it's like impossible uh, trying to do something without a phone or without internet yeah. or whatever. I can understand that. I'm addicted too. I mean, yeah. I got a lot of things on my on my phone. I got apps and wherever. But you know, you gotta make a choice. It's like 
when you do this kind of experience, mm -hmm. especially here in the wilderness or uh, whatever it is you're traveling or something very tough, but you're doing something mm -hmm. very tough, it's like wasting the approach to experience it. Mm. Yeah. So do you think it makes you feel more in that moment, more in that experience when you're forced to just sort of be Actually, by yourself? Actually, yeah. When you, have, when you know that you have to do something and you are your only resource mm -hmm. and uh, you grow up, super quickly mm. and uh, if you got a help of a thing that do things for you yeah that really helps you it's like you have a partner and so okay. if you want to have an help uh, some help just take a buddy with you i mean there's <laughs> a phone. I mean, someone very skilled right so i mean uh you can have a beer at the end of the night you can yeah. you can't use the phone to have a beer right but i mean mm. it's like uh, wasting the experience and uh, you don't want to do that. So tell us about why you're here then. Why? What brought you to Dawson City? Um, I read a book when I was 14 years old of a guy named Walter Bonatti. He was a it's huge a mountaineer and climber in the 50s and the 60s. Okay. And um, after his career as a climber, uh, he quit because there was nothing left to do to actually climb. Uh, so instead of repeating himself, he decided to explore the world and not in vertical sense, but in horizontal you sense. Like, okay. So desert, so uh, oceans, so forest. And the first experience uh, he got was in 1965. He came right here in Dawson City, actually paddled down the Yukon River from White Horse up to uh, Fort Yukon, and then he uh, went to uh, Old Crow and flew that with him on a kind of aircraft carrying a canoe on it, and he paddled back from the, the, the Porcupine River on his own. It really? was 1965, he just had a couple of lessons on paddling. He had, really? Didn't have skills for it. Yeah. What was this guy's name again? Walter Bonatti. Walter Bonatti? Yeah. Okay. So, and, and is this just one of his adventures, right? So yeah. I read the book when I was really young. I said, this is the approach that I could follow. Hmm. Not that I want to pay him, because I would be already died, I think, a long time ago. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was kind of Superman, superhero. Right? Is that how he died on one of his expeditions or something? Uh, or no, he didn't die at all. I mean, yeah. it's like, uh, he, he died two years ago. It was like, oh. one. Oh. And, yeah, pancreatic cancer. So it's like... Was so strong. I mean, people with pancreatic cancer normally lay in the bed for like six months from here because it's, it's a very, you know, it's it's a very strong. Uh, yeah. It's the condition that makes you super weak. For sure. But he was cutting trees. I mean, it's like, uh, <laughs> so that. So like yeah. a couple of weeks before he died, he was yeah. cutting trees and, you know, he felt, of course, he felt very, you know, depressed <laughs> and weak. But it was like just to let you understand the, the strength of this guy. Okay. It's the only case in history of a guy who came outdoor without a tent or a sleeping bag, just very close to the summit of the K2 at yeah. night, like minus you know, 60. And didn't get and doesn't get an amputation, not even a finger, or nothing. I mean, it didn't, uh -huh. yeah, and the guy who was with him got like seven fingers out there. <laughs> That's just to yeah. understand the guy. Yeah. So I, I'm not in his class for sure, but you know, on my way, I can, you know, I can try to adapt eventually, like, yeah. suit and, like put it on my body and say, okay, just When I uh, emailed the mayor, Wayne Podoroka, uh, a couple of months before I came here. I was like working on the pre-production of, of the movies. I was trying to get some contacts, you know, like the network. And, yeah. and he said, hey Igor, stop uh, asking questions, please, because now you gotta come here, come over here, knock on people's door and ask. If they're <laughs> not there, you will wait for a while. <laughs> <laughs> if they want to talk to you, then you will just step into the house yeah, and have yeah. a conversation with them. So, in this, uh, he said something like in this neck of the wood. Yeah, yeah. Right? We don't used to do that. That was pretty fun. I said, okay, that's the place for me, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's what's really special about this place. How it's uh, a real sense of community here and people, you know, just uh, go door to door to meet each other and uh, people just walk right into your house. Yeah. And sit down and, and that's so very well coming. Yeah, community, absolutely. Say, yeah, now, everybody. I mean, as a, a problem, as problems or as a you know a wrong side, a dark side. So it will show up when you you are with people for a while, right? So you understand that maybe he's not the best guy in the world like he was. First, you know, <laughs> you thought he was like yeah. the first week, but I mean, it's everywhere like that. Yeah. And the, the first impression is like. Yeah, like 90% of people are so all coming mm -hmm. and 
gets like absorbed here. I yeah. didn't. I didn't even. Uh, I mean, last time I had so much beer was like when I was <laughs> seventeen. So I was like, yeah, it was like everybody goes drinking. I guess drinking for yeah. beers and whatever. Nearly every night. I mean, they work. It's like it's not Erasmus project. It's yeah. not students just uh, walking around. It's nothing. It's just studying a few hours in the day. They really work hard in the day, yeah. but they want to have fun. Want to socialize. That's why I'm spending all my money just uh, drinking beer. I don't even eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just have a one Guinness every uh, every yeah, few hours. So, uh, get yeah, your protein. That's right. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's awesome here. Yeah. Well, again, so this is Igor Dindia I'm speaking with right now, and he's up here in Dawson because he wants to retrace the path of Walter Bonatti, who came up here in '65. And he also wants to see if he can meet a few of these folks uh, who lived here at the time. Uh, Benson, Castellarin, Pennington, and Hunter. So maybe if those folks are still around, or if you happen, you're happen, you listening now and you happen to have heard of them, uh, would, I know that Igor would love to talk to you or, or talk to them and, um, and sort of just learn a little bit about what that experience was, was like meeting uh, Walter. Yeah. So you're, you want to... Basically, go on this canoe trip up yeah. the Yukon River. Yeah, but next year, not now. Next year, yeah. yeah. So you're in town right now to kind of, kind of learn a little bit about the land and yeah. maybe meet some people who can help you on this on this project. And that's right. That's okay. Right. Yeah, I will basically um, actually went to Toronto in November just to find a sponsorship for for this project. But everything yeah. looks so big and and you know everything has to be like. Uh, a lot of contracts, a lot of uh, money behind that, a lot yeah. of control by the broadcasters, and I said, okay, uh, and it was very slow because I want to, I wanted to do this this year, mm. and they said the four two years we're like everything is kettle and whatever we will see, or they were very you know like, ah uh, yeah it's a nice project but not now or you know we're not ca you're not Canadians you need the Canadian production behind you and everything and say you know what I'm going to Dawson I got no money <laughs> I hitchhike from Toronto that's yeah. a matter. Uh, and I've been pretty lucky because I got here in six days hitchhiking and uh, and I will knock on people's door I only just a canoe some uh, lessons next year before I go on the trip yeah and some supplies for two months and I will pay the rest of the movie on my own yeah so it will be a nice thing I think it's a good project I still have to talk to Yukon Park and Canada Parks Birth Park Canada yeah okay <laughs> uh, and uh, I would like to share a few ideas with these guys because okay. maybe you, and the, the uh, Wayne Pedro got the mayor is still helping me with this um, because there will be like an institutional part so they can um, like uh, support a little bit expedition uh, so that would be great I mean mm -hmm. They could help me, you know, contact someone, nice interview, to see how the river has changed in these 50 years, because this is the core of the movie. Yeah. I would like to, you know, this uh, point of view, Italian point of view, so mm. a fresh view on the Yukon River and its people. Uh, and there are two generation explorers, right, from, one is from 1965, one is in now. Yeah. And uh, so that could be very interesting and really, uh, could be a really promoting thing for, for the Yukon territory. Okay. Really nice thing. I would like to show this place people back home. So how would how would somebody get a hold of you? I mean, we, your website is i g o r d i n d i a dot i t. Excellent. Right. Mm -hmm. And then how about um, like do, what's maybe your email or yeah. or and phone maybe if some people don't have uh, yeah, the internet. Yeah, you can write me a, a mail uh, email to uh, info dot uh, sorry info at igordindia dot i t. So mm -hmm. info is just uh, info yeah. at igordindia.it. Mm -hmm. Or oh, you can call me because I'm yeah. here. Or actually, even better, just do the Dawson way, the Dawson side. Just <laughs> yeah. knock on my on my door because okay. I'm just living in an RV on 8th uh, Avenue. Okay. So you just go there and knock on my door. There's only one RV. So. There's only one RV on 8th, yeah, yeah. 8th and what? It's like uh, between no, Queen just, and Princess or something? Uh, yeah, it's 8th uh, and Princess, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just knock on my door, whatever it is, or just you can find it at the beat at night, so just uh, tell yeah. me. Yeah. And you're you've got a beard and a toque and and you've got a <laughs> European accent, so people you, you yeah, stick out like a sore yeah, thumb. Just, just, ask, <laughs> just ask for Igor, uh, then you find me somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like okay. <laughs> so. <sort of, laughs> I think like eighty percent of the men in town have beards. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
So why of, of all the... Well, actually, I'll, I'll come back to that question in a second. First of all, uh, what have some of these the guides and stuff you've been talking to um, been telling you about about this trip? Like what you need to prepare for, or what you might encounter on there? Mm -hmm. what, like what do what do you expect this journey to be like? Is it it could be mostly just sort of calm, slow paddling, or are you going to be whipping down the river? Or like what? And then are you going to be camping on the side of the river? Yeah, that's or? for sure. Yeah, I will be just uh, I will be paddling mainly. I know like. 10 hours a day maybe and because in that period there's a lot of sunlight even at night right mm. so I can take different footage of the, with this amazing uh, light that we have uh, mm. here in this uh, in the river right and um, yeah I will try to film some uh, very nice you know landscape and I will stop in a little in small towns too like Old Crow like here like uh, Eagle to see what's changed uh, from Bonatis uh, uh, tell uh, stories okay. and um, so I need a little bit of time I can just paddle and I, I gotta shoot a movie actually so and I will actually have also uh, before I go there I'll let you have some aerial shots too hmm. uh, so this will be part of the sponsorship if I find something like a helicopter flying yeah a helicopter. good good footage I mean there is all already in internet there is a bunch of stuff where you can buy you know, footage from the Yukon River, frozen, hmm. not frozen, I mean, summer, really? winter, yeah, okay. so you can probably buy it, uh, but I would like to have my own footage, actually, so uh, I will spend my time just uh, trying to get, you know, the, to get in, in touch with the, with the environment around me, especially mm -hmm. in the first week, mm -hmm. and then I will just find the best place for uh, telling stories, I can film myself just telling what's going on. Hmm. And and then I have to find the source in the town, so I'll be pretty busy. And uh, so there'll be parts of the movie where you're actually talking I to local people and stuff as well, as opposed to just you paddling in the river. Oh, uh, that would be like uh, I, don't, I don't want to be too focused on my own. Like, yeah, I am important. And look at me. Uh, I would like to the paddling, of course, is like my experience. So I'm the only one there. So right. I have to tell the river, the wilderness and everything. But also my you know, my impressions because it could be interesting for people to see. Uh, if I don't know, if I get stuck somewhere, if I guess what are what's the what's the difference between my expectation and what I actually find there, this could be interesting for people. Uh, but I want to give a lot of space to uh, the to the people on the river, living in the river every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, the environment and the wilderness too. So there will be a lot of space, like I'm not talking at all, just people talking about a story or something special or about the change in these 50 years, mm -hmm. and, or about the environment or about the wilderness. Or we'll see just a bear doing something for a while and then we come back to see me paddling. Mm -hmm. It could be like, it must be good balanced because whenever you self film, you put a, you know you are in a, you put yourself in a situation very uh, fragile mm. like you have to be very careful because I don't you, you can look immediately like the guy who wants to be important and wants to talk mm. about himself because he's the guy right I don't want to do that I just want to share my experience and I want to see what I I want to share with people what I see well you got a lot of stories Igor this has been really fascinating we we actually went on for a couple hours here because there was that big gap between uh, between the shows so I appreciate you uh, thank you buddy um, staying with us for the for the whole period it's um, uh, I wish you the best of luck on this project Thanks. it sounds like it's gonna be really exciting and I'm sure it'll come together it seem like a pretty motivated guy so <laughs> I'm sure you'll <laughs> maybe I'll see you here next year I yeah maybe who knows, knows who's back right <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, cool. Well, thanks again, Igor. And Thank you. Um, again, like your your website, uh, uh, igordindia.it, so people can check you out there. That's right. They can come find you on the RV on 8th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just knock on my door at night, wherever you want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, I, I'm really glad uh, we had this opportunity to chat. And uh, I'm just going to play a song out here, and then we'll have some uh, more music up and right next. Cool. Thank you, guys.